Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we've been addressing the various parables of Jesus, which are contained in the Gospels. And finally, the parable of the children in the marketplace, which is found in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. It's a pretty short parable, but with a lot of context to help in interpreting it. So let's take a look. But whereunto shall I esteem this generation to be like? It is like to children sitting in the marketplace. Matthew eleven sixteen. Jesus is talking about the generation of people who lived during New Testament times. He compares them with little children, and while Jesus usually has good things to say about children, here he is referring to something else. Who, crying to their companions, say, We have piped to you, and you have not danced. We have lamented, and you have not mourned. Matthew eleven seventeen, And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation, and to what are they like? They are like to children sitting in the marketplace, and speaking one to another, and saying, We have piped to you, and you have not danced, we have mourned, and you have not wept. Luke seven thirty one to 32 Here, Jesus is saying that this is the plight people face in his generation. No matter what they did, it never seemed to make a difference to others. They could give people a reason to be joyous, and other people would still make up some reason to reject that joy. They could express deep sorrow, and other people would still refuse to sympathize with them or show them any pity at all. This is what Jesus means by referring to those who pipe, and others don't dance, lament, and others don't mourn. And we know this because of what he says next in explaining this parable. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they said, He hath a devil. Matthew eleven eighteen, For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say, He hath a devil. Luke seven thirty three. As proof that his comparison is accurate, Jesus cites John the Baptist, who fasted and drank no liquor, surviving on honey and bugs, and living in the wilderness dressed in animal skins, in every way. He demonstrated all the outward signs of a holy man and a prophet who tries to atone for sin. In fact, the people in general seem to have recognized that. The Pharisees, however, never even considered the messages that God was sending them through his prophets. Instead, they made up an excuse for refusing to believe in John. In this case, they accused him of being possessed. Pious behavior always looks odd to worldly people, and too, too many worldly people equate odd with bad. Denouncing as evil everything that seems odd to normal folks is not a sufficient response, however, when someone is calling you out for your evil doing. Jesus is pointing out that if fasting and mortification could have won over the Pharisees to do the will of God, John the Baptist surely would have done so. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man that is a glutton and a wine drinker, a friend of publicans and sinners, and wisdom is justified by her children. Matthew 11.19 The Son of Man is come, eating and drinking, and you say, Behold, a man that is a glutton and a drinker of wine, a friend of publicans and sinners, and wisdom is justified by all her children. Luke 7.34-35 Jesus, on the other hand, is actually God, so he isn't vulnerable to pride, and has no need to fast or mortify himself beyond what was involved in being made man, though he did still do it for forty days in the wilderness. He could preach the truth without needing to engage in the unpleasant practices that John excelled in. So if the Pharisees had refused John's message merely out of disgust or distaste or emotional revulsion over what they considered odd behavior, they should have accepted the message of Jesus. The fact that they didn't proves that far from there being anything wrong with the way the message was delivered or with the messengers, the Pharisees rejected the messages of God simply because they wanted to. Prophets and apostles could use positive or negative terms to address them with that message, but it would make no difference to the sulking children in the market. Next, a new season on the councils of the church, beginning with the gathering at Jerusalem. See you then. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.